Greetings and salutations, DPG community, and welcome back to another episode of D-Pad Talk Radio. We got ourselves a special type of post here today. In fact, I might even go as far to say we got ourselves a controversial one on our hands. That's right. This might get under your skin. This post might piss you off more than getting headshot by a hacker while trying to get a self-res at a buy station. But let's get into it. Because I was riding solo. I was rolling down the street, reading my Bible, sipping on some chocolate milk. I was laid back. And as I was out in my travels, I came upon a friendship truck rally and thought, hey, maybe I can insert myself into this equation and make a couple bros that I can roll into the final circle with. But as I rolled up to the old four-wheel party, I noticed somebody already hanging out in the back of one of the trucks. It seems an alliance had already been made. Maybe I can be their friend. But the man in the back seemed to have other plans, and maybe he's not as trustworthy as I thought. But I'm not going to let it deter me, because I'm a people person. I'm going to show them that my love is worthy of yours. So I make a quick loop, drive around, and I sound my horn to let them know, Hey, buddy, I'm on your side. We end up on the same part of the airfield, and we drive right at each other. And I sound my horn one more time. And so does he. And the man in the back seems cool, and now it looks as if this one-man wrecking crew is now ready to roll as three amigos. But as we go to drive off, I notice a glint in the distance. And if there's anything I've learned about Warzone, a glint is never friendly. So I go do what needs to be done, and we send him to the gulag. We sound our horns to let everybody know that friends have been made, and nobody is safe. But as we frolic our way across the airfield, I notice some shots coming at me, and I think, that can't be the guy in the back of the truck, is it? Why, it is. Now I know they say three's a crowd, so it's time to adjust this guest list. I'm sorry, my friend. You can't be trusted anymore. And now that we've gotten the bad egg out of the way... It's now time for Bro 1 and Bro 2 to broaden the horizons of this relationship. As we turn the corner, we notice another vehicle up ahead, and we wonder, can we get one more man in the mix? Let's find out. I pull up alongside of him, and it looks like he's going back and forth in the same spot, which is usually a universal sign of friendship. It seems like he's cool, so I pull off to go get my buddy and let him know, hey, we've got a new broski on our team. But then I notice in the rear view, He's trying to run down my number one bro? Not on my watch. You clearly can't be trusted, sir. So we're gonna keep this faction as a duo. Night night. And now it's just me and the OG bro. The two of us just around a pile of loot. When I notice a trophy system. Now I've already got one, but my friend does not. And now he could be protected if he just gets out of the truck and grabs it. I try like hell to signal to him. He realizes what's going on. And now, we're both strapped, packed, protected, and ready to roll. Let's get back to it, old buddy. We decided to drive straight through Quarry like some weird cutscene from Fast and the Furious. And as we pull through, we came across our first Johnny Jackass. Sorry, Johnny. I don't think you understand what you've involved yourself in here. He does a lot of damage to my ride. In fact... He does a critical type of damage. But Johnny had different plans. He thought he could bamboozle me and steal my truck. Take that arrow to the butt cheeks for your troubles, buddy. Rest in peace. Now as good as it felt to get Johnny out of the equation, as you can tell by the radar, I'm not alone. This is a sticky situation we're in right now. I hope my boy is okay. I turn the corner to see who else is on the other side and look who it is. My best friend. We run at each other in celebration. But I know we're not alone. We stay low. We keep a good eye on our surroundings. But I'm not going to lie to you folks. I had a very weird moment right here. A little thought popped into my head. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help but think to myself, all I could do is just throw an arrow at him right now and not have to worry about this. Have no extra baggage to carry along into the final circle. But then I remembered everything we'd already been through. And I wasn't about to throw that away. We get ourselves on the same page. He moves up to a tree to give some cover because we know there's somebody inside this building. Trying to figure out why he's repositioning and then I notice why he's baiting him. Ballsy move there, broski. But I like your style. 
I get behind him to fire off a couple of arrows in hopes that I can finish this guy trying to send my boy to the gulag. He's a worthy opponent. We decide to reposition, and we end up putting ourselves in quite a pickle. When all of a sudden, ha <laughs> ha, I can always depend on you, can I, buddy? Let me hop in the back of this truck and let's roll ourselves in one of the craziest final circles I've ever been a part of. But we know what we have in our grasps. Right now, we're staring down the barrel of taking out everybody else and leaving it to just the two of us. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Let's get to work. What people don't know about this land of Verdansk is there's a lot of things that'll drive a man insane. There's hackers. There's campers. And then there's the final circle in a solos match where everybody brings in a goddamn vehicle. But apparently this guy didn't get the vehicle memo. So that makes him target number one and done. This ended up bringing my attention to Bobby Bushman over here. Well, we don't like no Bushman. No, we don't. Now in a situation like this, I know Bertha's are gonna be the real problem. So I start pumping as many arrows into that big bitch as I possibly can. And this is turning into quite a party. But no party is complete without a party pooper. And there he is, just pooping in a bush. Well, Peter poops a lot. You have underestimated the bond that I have built with my Riot Shield brethren. But if we just listen to this beautiful sound right here, Peter got himself run over. And now because of that, we get to see a first-person view of my boy at work. He completely shreds this bot not paying attention, and we're down to the final two. We got ourselves Big Bertha versus a Tacky Wacky. Who's gonna win? Will my boy be able to bully his way to a victory? I sure hope so. He calls in a cluster strike, and my god, it's looking beautiful. But he misses every drop. And now he puts himself at a risk to where he has to drive through his own damn cluster strike. My god, buddy, what have you put yourself into now? But luckily for us, my boy's opponent had the awareness of a cucumber and a brain as smooth as silk. Because for whatever reason, he thought getting out of the tack rover was the right move. Wrong move indeed. And as the dust settles, my unknown friend of the war zone claims the dust. Yes! <laughs> that felt so much better than a win for myself. I may not be the one to claim this win, but it felt like one. And even though you didn't have a headset, my friend, even though we may never see each other ever again, I want you to know I was smiling too. Thank you all very much for tuning in to today's episode. Stay happy, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Take care.